Um, so when you come in the doors, um, this is obviously our front office. Um, in our front office, we have Olin Rhodes, who is our senior patient navigator as well, and Ryan Rages, who is our junior patient navigator, and he's our transport lead. Um, so Olin's focus is patient services. So as patients come in to register, to inquire about um, any follow-up uh, matters or for to pick up patient supplies, um, these two are our front faces, our front office, our front hands. Um, the door behind you actually houses all of our supplies. So this is all the supplies that we provide um, based on what a cancer patient's journey requires of them. A lot of times when patient, patients go through chemotherapy, they lose their appetite. So as one of the services that we provide is our nutritional supplements um, in the form of glucerna for diabetics and Ensure for non-diabetics. Uh, we do also provide Jevity 1.2, which is for peg feeding. However, um, with our distributor um, supply and demand, um, it actually takes like three months to land on one. So currently we are out, but we, are, we will be putting in an order should we get back to funded status. Uh, we also provide incontinence supplies for our um, colorectal cancer patients who have a colostomy. Um, so these are the colostomy bags and the wafers. And we do provide incontinence supplies in the form of adult wipes, bed liners, adult diapers. Um, there are some specific um, ostomy patients. Your, we have a um, colostomy and urostomy patients. So urostomy for like urinary uh, cancer patients. Um, so we do provide those as well. Um, and then we do have durable medical equipment in the form of wheelchairs, walkers, bedside commodes, shower chairs. We do have vitamin T and turmeric. Why are these essential? Yes, so for patients with breast cancer or prostate cancer um, that uh, potentially affects their bones, we provide vitamin D and turmeric to help supplement that. Um, so Jessica Rosales is our cancer screening program manager. And then Pauline Manabusen is our patient services coordinator. Oh, uh, so Pauline is very instrumental to us navigators because she helps us ensure that all our documents are in line um, and everything that we're um, doing on behalf of a, pa a patient, we have everything documented. And then obviously uh, Jessica, Jessica is the one out in the community, ouch, out in the community um, educating and informing the pa uh, community of our screening efforts as well as any services that are provided at Guam Cancer Care. Um, she's also very, very busy um, going into the businesses and getting them to participate and ensure they take advantage of those screening services, whether they're insured or uninsured. So back here is George and I. So George and um, I'm also, as I had mentioned, I'm a senior patient navigator, but my focus is pharmaceuticals. Um, so any patients, and George is my um, second for pharmaceuticals, any cancer patients that get treated at any of our providers here on island um, requiring immunotherapy or targeted um, medications for their specific diagnosis. Um, that's where I come in. Um, a lot of times, a lot of these medications are high tiered, high cost. Um, insurance may not cover them at all, or if they do, it's very minimal coverage. Um, so that's where we come in. We work hand in hand with all the major pharma companies in the States. And that's to get access for our Guam patients, um, access to either free, um, zero to no cost medications specific to their cancer diagnosis. So on a monthly, we average roughly about 420,000 in outside resources, and that's majority just pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. One of the, the things they cited about our grant application was personnel costs. Um, you know, they're, um, but then they don't realize, we, we report a comprehensive, detailed monthly report every month to the trust fund. And one of the points that we try to make over the last 13 program years is the, the need for a navigator. Um, if there was no navigator, how are these drugs coming in? If there was no navigator, how are the patient's payments being processed? You know, if there was no navigator, how can we navigate a cancer patient through their cancer journey here on island. Um, you know, we don't want to toot our own horns, but you know, I, I, I at least feel me being here and the job that I do and the outcomes that I can get on behalf of a patient, that's a lot, like it's worth a lot. I know it's worth a lot to my patients because otherwise 
where would they turn to for to get these um, the assistance? We only have two requirements. It's one, you're a resident of Guam. Second, you do have a confirmed cancer diagnosis. Every patient that walks through our door that meets those two criteria, our two requirements, are automatically awarded $1,200 a quarter. And how that works is we pay it directly to your cancer treating providers or the cancer uh, or the pharmacies dispensing your cancer medications. Is there anything I guess you want to say to our, our island leaders, seeing as we we're at this point? It's it's we are just the facilitators. Um, we are the oh you know we're the pass through to the patients. At the end of the day, it's the patient on the line. Um, without the services, who will be there to help our patients? You know can't go. Out, 13 years, 13 years of providing these services to the, our local cancer community. It's made a big impact, um, you know, and I'm not saying, maybe I'm biased by saying it, but if you go and speak to the patients, their providers, I'm pretty sure they will echo our sentiment. Um, so at the end of the day, it really just boils down to the patients, irregardless of the bureaucracy, the admin stuff, like it's really the patients that are affected at the end of the day.